Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers Teaching Teachers. I'm talking fast tonight. I don't know why. It's Pi Night. It's March 13, 14. <laughs> Blew that joke. 314. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 2012. And this is actually Teachers Teaching Teachers 288. Um, welcome. We have a, a couple of Founders, is that okay? Can I call you guys founders, developers of sure. online services? Um, and we'll kind of let them introduce themselves. Steve Cunningham is here from Read It For Me. And um, Kirill, say your last name for me. It's Kirev. And your last name? Kirev oh, is my last name. Last... Okay, sorry. It's similar to my first name. <laughs> Got it. From Instagrock, um, and Lisa mm -hmm. Prezi is with us. Um, Lisa is somebody who's messed around with um, Instagrock, um, as I have a bit. And uh, Monica and Chris are with us. And um, Steve Cunningham has worked with Monica with Read It For Me. I don't know which way to start, but I've talked to both of you guys, and I think I said to one of you, I think Kirill, that. Um, we might organize this by giving each of you about 15 minutes here at the beginning and then kind of throw it open. Sound all right? I don't know. Somebody has to raise yeah. their hand to see who starts. <laughs> um, you guys don't know each other, do you? No, we don't. No. We don't. All right. So one of the things, let me just start by saying that one of the things I started getting interested in as I was looking at both of your services is that you both have what I would like to call a theory of literacy in that there's you have ideas about how people learn, um, how reading and writing happening. So we're teachers and we're always interested in that kind of question. Um, so that's one of the things I'd like to explore myself. Chris, uh, why don't you jump in before they jump in? Have you had a chance to look at the services yet? I did, yeah. I did, yeah. First impression. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to think about how um, I can incorporate them into the classroom. But, um, you know, on first blush, I, I like, you know, Instagrox. I don't know what you call that technology where it's like there's a center term and then things go around. Uh, but um, my students think like that, so I think that's a real intuitive way to find information because a lot of times they don't know what they're looking for. Uh, but when they see other terms that are related to it, I think that'll help them kind of find their way through the information. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Read It For Me appeals to me and my students because of uh, just, um, you know, they're readers, but they don't always uh, have time to read everything that they want to read. So that, those are my first kind of reads of those two services yeah can we jump in in the conversation or have we... yeah why don't we keep going with instagram yeah and then then we'll get to read it for me right after that go ahead okay okay well chris yeah i definitely uh resonate with what you just said and that's actually one of the kind of big motivations for what instagram is about which is that learning for most people happens as a way of connecting things, right? So you learn about something new and connect it into your existing frame of reference into your kind of current map of the world. You extend your current map of the world. And that's exactly what we're trying to do with Instagram is to kind of give them the, the big the big picture about a topic. So Instagram is kind of, for those who don't know, is kind of a next generation educational search engine, but it's really much more than that because unlike a typical search engine that returns you a bunch of web links, Instagram returns a much richer representation of the topic, you know, with the important terminology and the um, and this visual layout of how everything's connected and lots of other things. Um, and so, what our goal is to empower is to empower um, self-directed learning for everybody. So, you want to learn about a topic? Like here it is. Here's here's a field to explore, right? Um, with a typical search engine, you just get a bunch of web links, and you're like, well, I just don't know what to click on. Not to mention the fact that half of them are probably relevant. They're like commercial sites or movies or whatever. But even 
of the other ones, it's like you really just don't know where to start. You just have to kind of click on one and start reading it. And you know, most people really get frustrated with this process um, because sometimes you don't know what you don't know. That's another way to look at it, right? Um, and so, and there's all sorts of research that kind of there's really, uh, for instance, one um, place that I really like is uh, what's called project information literacy from out of the University of Washington that really looks at uh, how sort of uh, I think primarily college students do research and kind of research um, both for school and um, for their own sort of interests. And some of the common things that they find is like the biggest two challenges of doing this kind of research is a, one is what they call the big picture problem. In other words, understanding how this topic connects to what you know about the world, right? So what is the what is important to know about this topic? Um, what are the questions to ask? And the second one, which is related, is the vocabulary problem. So in other words, what, what are things called? What is the terminology? So in a nutshell, Instagram tries to help you with both of these things. It helps you really like visually see what this topic is about. And it really helps you like explore it and understand how things are connected and drill down and explore and learn about what you're interested in that topic. You know, so if you're searching for civil war, you're like, okay, well, what's it to know about the civil war? Oh, okay, there's the you know secession, there's this, there's the southern states, northern states. You kind of start really exploring on your own. Um, yeah, and so uh, we're definitely uh, really excited. I'm really excited about doing this. This is just kind of uh, it's just in the early very early stages. We're moving really quickly, trying to iterate and uh, create a more and more fun, interactive, and hopefully intelligent system. Um, for me, and feel free, to, feel free to interrupt me and ask me questions. I'm not sure how, how this typically works, but um, so for me, for me, learning has always been a really big, big deal. It's something that, like, both because it's something that I really love and it's something that really helped empower me. Like, I'm a first generation immigrant. From the Soviet Union, so it's kind of I felt that kind of empowerment from education, and so I just that's kind of where my big passion is to help help like help let others kind of discover this joy of just learning learning about anything. Uh, so that's that's kind of that's the mission of it. I just want to jump in here because one of the things I love about Instagram from a teacher's point of view is the groks themselves mm -hmm. that every single time a child sets up a search it sets up a grok for them and and since i started on it i mean i know i wasn't working with you at first but i will now because the person i was working with isn't in the on the um, company anymore but um i really appreciate the um the speed at which you were changing things for my needs. So one of the things I said is I wanted to be able to see the, all the grocks of my students. Mm -hmm. I really like that I can see where where they have a layout of what they've um, searched. And every time they go to a website, it goes up on their grok. So they don't have mm -hmm. to remember, oh, I forgot to save the website. I teach younger students, and often their um, source site is Google. Mm -hmm. It's like Google is not a source. You cannot cite it as a source. Right. And I like that um, Instagram does that for them. I also like the quiz section because, and I'm not a testing person or a quiz person, but what I like is the quizzes change according to their searches. Mm -hmm. So as they get tighter and tighter into their search topic, the quiz will change for them so they can see how much they're actually learning from their searches. Lisa, Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, and just to elaborate a little bit on what Lisa told for people who haven't tried Instagram, the, the, the two things she mentioned is one is the grocks, which are what we're calling these journals. So as you're doing a search, this journal gets auto generated for you of all the sites you visited things you learned about so that now you can go back and kind of add your notes and kind of explain synthesize what you've learned about and you know and you can send it to the teacher and you can see what you've been doing so like integral to this research we're really trying to um, have this kind of piece about kind of creating this journal um, and, and 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 certainly 
the part about kind of really promoting information literacy and cultivating these skills is really important to us and something we want to really continue building support for. So in other words, figuring out like where this information can come from, really making students mindful about citing sources and stuff like that. So we'd love to have, to, to, to hear ideas about how that how Instagram can provide better scaffolding for that kind of um, practice. And then the second part, uh, part that Lisa mentioned is the quizzes, which so we Instagram, one of the features Instagram has it, is it based on what you're browsing, based on the topic, it automatically generates these little multiple choice tests, which are really meant to kind of just, you know, help you help you see how much you know to begin with, help you see how well you're learning, and if you don't understand something, because each of the quiz questions really is generated from the content that you've read, so you can always, if you're not clear about what the answer is, if you're just intrigued by this question, you can click the more button right next to it and go to the original content page from which the quiz was generated. So it's a way to both learn, to, to both test yourself, but also learn continuously. And I do find my students using those quizzes when they do searches, because they'll say, yeah. you know, I can't find any information. I'm like, why don't you take the quiz and see what happens? And what mm -hmm. they find is, well, they didn't really understand what they were looking at, and now they get another chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just to throw something else out there, there's been uh, studies that show that sort of the process of active recall really helps learning, helps retention. So in other words, when you're doing stuff, like not, not just taking it in, but doing whether it's just simple stuff like flashcards or quizzes, it really helps us learn better and re retain information better. Lisa, I wanted you to introduce yourself. I'm sorry I didn't introduce you. Lisa Parisi <laughs> has a show on EdTech Talk as well. Um, can you, um, what grade do you teach? Is it fourth grade? Is that right? I am now teaching fourth grade. Yes, I've been a fifth grade teacher for a long time, but this is my first year back in fourth grade. Um, but I've been an elementary teacher for, I don't want to tell you how long, <laughs> more than 25 years. Well, and um, I've seen things come and go. <laughs> and great. So, uh, and just to address the question of the format, um, we don't do presentations. We want to have a conversation. So that interrupting each other is great. Um, Monica and Steve, I want to throw it to the two of you for a little while here. And Steve, I don't know if you were hearing this, but I was hearing a lot of echoes. I was hearing self-directed learning. I was hearing the active recall, um, which was just mentioned. I mean, you, the memorization stuff you guys think about. So can you kind of introduce us to read it for me? And maybe Monica. How did you come upon Read It For Me? And then Steve, jump in. Well, first, um, just a tiny yeah. bit of um, exposure I've gotten to um, your site. I absolutely love the non-linearity of it, that um, you do a search, and um, it gives you all these options, like links of the web. I think, along with your research of retention, just the fact that it's per choice, I think that's huge. Um, it's it's very much, your site is very much towards self-directed learning and I absolutely love it. So I'm looking forward to spending more time there. Um, as far as Read It For Me goes, um, personally, I've um, kind of taken a turn and I, instead of doing the thing that I think I was supposed to do in my life, I'm doing things that I really want to do and that that gives you an addiction to learning almost. And you just, you, it's, it's like you can't, you know, satiate yourself. You, you just, you have to keep learning more. So a site like um, yours, Crow, is perfect, as is um, Steve's, where, like you referenced before, Paul, it, it's like you can't read enough. You can't you want to read everything. You find a topic or something that you, you want to learn about and you want to know all the people that went before you that's, you know, ever thought about it and you just don't have enough time in the day. So that's where I started falling in love with what Steve's doing with um, giving you the, the short version of the book and, you know, you can decide to read the book or you can decide that now I've gotten enough from this author. Um, so I'm, I'm seeing both of these resources as great for self-directed learners of the future. Um, 
Steve's, because I've spent more time with it, I see it kind of as a Wikipedia for reading, you know, for books. And I can see people that have the freedom to be self-directed adding to his resource um, as well as him adding um, more resources for whatever topics. I, I like things meshing up too. I can see the two meshing together as well. So there's my intro to Steve. Hi, Steve. Welcome. Thanks for having me. So what's, uh, what, what do we want to talk about? I know there's, you know, I can give you some background of the, the service or we can jump into some of those topics that you were talking about. Where do you, where do you want to start? Steve, tell us, tell us what, when we were talking with Paul the other night and you were sharing how, how it kind of came to be, like your experience with going into places and seeing all the shelves and. Sure, sure. So we, we kind of got into this, you know, I'm, I'm here on this hangout tonight by accident. So the background to our business is that we're a digital marketing agency. And a couple of years ago, we were really trying to um, talk to our clients about social media, like everybody on the planet was. And everybody was really excited, but nobody wanted to write us uh, a check, which as a, a business is a, is a challenge. So we decided that instead of talking about case studies and that kind of stuff, we were just going to go ahead and do something that would enable us to show, bring, come back to clients and show them how they could use it to grow their business. So what happened, uh, the, re, the idea for how we came to summarizing books is I would always go into a, you know, a president's or a VP's office, I'd sit there and there'd be a stack of books on their shelf or on their desk. And because I was a lawyer before I got into the, the family marketing business, uh, I really dove into as many business and personal development books as I could because I really had no idea how to run a business. And so I would ask these presidents and VPs about, you know, have you, you know, what do you think about that book? What do you think about the idea in this book? And they would stare at me blankly and say, I haven't read that book. I haven't read that one either. I haven't got to that one. And so it dawned on me that there is the, you know, either they were putting those books on their desks so that they could look good in front of their colleagues or that they really wanted to learn them and they just didn't have the time. So we decided we would take that and we would create essentially summaries of those books and we would do it by video uh, because we knew that video was a little bit more engaging, was a little bit more exciting and that, that they may be more inclined to watch that as opposed to reading a, a PDF. So we sent that out to a few people. They passed it on to 20 to 50, 100 and uh, very quickly it was reaching thousands of people uh, to the point where we had venture capitalists calling us asking what our business model was and uh, I told them we didn't have one and so I stopped getting calls from venture capitalists. And then um, we realized that we had a, a business there so we turned it into a business. And one of the, uh, the coolest things that we found was that people were calling us and telling us how they were using it in ways that we never would have imagined. And one of those ways was that uh, teachers were showing the videos to their students in uh, elementary and high schools around the world, which was really, uh, really blew our minds. And so we were kind of wrestling with how we were going to deal with that and how we were going to be able to work with the, the education community. Uh, and we knew that we didn't want to uh, charge uh, for the content, but we really didn't know how to handle it. And then I read uh, uh, a book by Blake McCoskey, who's the founder of Tom Shoes. And his idea for Tom Shoes is that for every pair of shoes that they sell, they give one to a, a child in need somewhere on the planet. And so then it was really simple after that. We decided we would do uh, a one-for-one -one in our own business where for every subscriber that we get from the corporate world, we would give a school, including the students and the teachers, a free subscription to read it for me so they could use the videos and the content however they liked. And so that's how we ended up here today. And you know, we've got lots of things about how people learn and how they should learn and um, you know the content that, you know, they could be learning, and so I'd love to dive into any one of those things that you think might be interesting to talk about. Let's see if Kirill has any questions for Steve. <laughs> sure, yeah, well, I'm really intrigued by what you guys are doing. So is it accurate to say that so you get, uh, you, you pick a particular book, and basically your staff creates this 
summary kind of of it. Is that is that a good approximation of what happens? Yeah. So we take the book, we turn it into a, it's about a, a twelve to fifteen minute long script, and then we create visuals around it, and essentially it's turned into a video. And so then what we do beyond that is we create some other assets like a workbook. We create what is essentially an acronym, but we call it an idea code so that people can easily remember the core concepts in the book. And the reason for that is that we, you know, personally, I would read, you know, uh, two or three of these books every single week, and I wouldn't apply anything. I'd, I'd be too busy getting on to the next book. And, you know, I wasn't doing this for entertainment. Uh, I wasn't reading these business books to pass the time. I was doing it to accomplish something. And so I realized that I needed a way to easily retain all of the information. So then we took take a look at the research and how people memorize and how people recall information and really just devised a simple way for people to do that. And of course, you're going to lose some of the nuance with a lot of this stuff. But the idea is that the accumulation of all this knowledge is really what you're after. And it's the ability to uh, apply it in the situations that you find yourself in every day that really matters. And so... That's kind of how we, we take some, some knowledge that perhaps uh, people would never get to because they're too busy. And we try to give it to them in a format that they can easily digest, but then also create a system for themselves so they can apply it day after day after day and accomplish whatever it is they want to accomplish. And so that's kind of our, uh, you know, very briefly, our theory of how people can take that knowledge and apply it to their lives. That's really cool. Uh, I mean, I definitely, in a sense, I see some parallel between what we're doing. In a sense, Instagram tries to do automatically from just sort of auto, trying try to digest a particular topic on the internet and try to sort of extract what's really the most important things to know about it, this topic, which is similar to what you guys are doing with each individual book. Yeah, I think there are a lot of similarities. And you talked a lot about connecting the dots and talking with the big picture earlier. And really that's what the thing behind what we're doing is we try to get people to think about what are what am I trying to accomplish here before you read the book so that you can, as you're learning, start thinking about how do I how does this fit into what I'm doing and how does it fit into my life. And so really it is about the uh, the big picture. Uh, and mm -hmm. I think you know, we've got two very different ways of approaching it, but with the end goal being the same. So it's kind of, I think it's kind of mm -hmm. cool to see two very different approaches to the same end goal and uh, both probably um, equally equally effective. Yours is probably more effective than ours, but um, I think it's it, your, the way you're approaching it is really cool as well. I just spent a little bit of time in your service and really enjoyed it. Cool, thanks. So I both of you said... And both of, um, go, ahead. go ahead, Monica. You go. I was just going to say, I see his piece in both of them as um, <clears throat> instigating connections um, by, you know, however you search. I can, I can see both of them ending up connecting people, unlikely people who, because they are self-directed, they're following their whims and ending up in places. I know that on Steve's site, um, they have you rather than, again, just reading it, um, now what are you going to do about it? And so, you know, putting both ideas together and wherever that trail leads you, rather than going into a classroom, 1 to 30, and we're going to all do the same thing, and now we have a team, you know. It's self-directed, and, and you find those groups. It's like you're crowdsourcing. Mm -hmm. So there, there is a connection part. In, I, I, this is all new to me, and I just signed up and sent you an email, Steve. But, um, <laughs> is the, is there like after I read a book, is there a group that it would put me into? Or after? There, there's none of those uh, features yet, and really, what we're doing is we're in the exploring phase of trying to figure out what's the best way to do that. Uh, we we did have you know places where people could comment and leave their ideas before, but we really are exploring what's the best way to do this as we take it into a, a company setting, for instance, and also into a school setting. And we want to make sure that we do it in a way that really works. Uh, and we know that probably having a free-for-all where everybody comes into the same place is not the best way to do it. So 
Um, that is certainly on our pipeline for development, but it's not currently available. And, you know, one of the reasons why um, you know I'm, I'm doing things like this is to try to understand from you, you know, what is the best way that we can start connecting uh, people with content and connecting people with people around the content. So I, you know, I'd ask, like to ask the question of you. What do you think? What do you think is the best way to connect people to the content after they're done consuming it? I personally think it would be great that anybody who um, goes through the content now is is offered the opportunity to be in some kind of a book talk or a conversation. I understand what you're saying about not having it to be a free for all. So maybe it could be that you friend people in a way like on Facebook kind of, and then you're only put in a group with people you know. And there might be suggestions for other people, you know, so you'll actually meet new people, but it won't be overall. Would you think it to be, sir, go ahead, Monica. As soon as you finish, don't you have, there's a, there's a, there's like three things. And the third thing is, now what are you going to do about it? And so that, that space is what I'm referring to. And then go back to, I'm not totally familiar with the grok. You know, I, I've been to the site, but I don't know what the grok looks like. But so now, now we have a file on you that you're interested in these things. And, you know, that using the nodes of the, um, these connections now, I, I would think of like a match.com, you know, um, mm -hmm. you have yeah. some kind of file of what all you've looked at and mm -hmm. the internet can get you closer and closer to people who are, you know, maybe yeah. you've read two books like somebody else, but now what if a, a month later you read 10 books like the same group of people? So now, you know, we do have that match.com idea bringing you together. Absolutely. Learning based on the user behavior and personalizing it to the user, the more the system learns about it. Absolutely. Yeah. I love your, I love your quiz thing. I mean, I'm not a test person either, but the fact that you're, again, your site is um, totally driven by, it's not directed by some outside force, and it's in perpetual beta if it's continually mm -hmm. changing that. Mm -hmm. There's got to be that element that we can, you know, we can do with matching people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What, one of the things that I would love to see in Instagram is for the kids to be able to share groks mm -hmm. um and one and one thing that was sort of bandied around and then i, I never heard anything about was the idea that maybe their gro their journal would like be put automatically in their google doc or something like that mm -hmm. because then they could share yeah we're, we're working on that that's definitely on our list yeah, so it, so it is you know a possibility where with the books I really see a book talk like I would love for my okay this echo is killing me but <laughs> I would love for my stat like my colleagues to all read a book together and then come together in some kind of discussion I happen to do this with my students in Edmodo where mm -hmm. I set up groups in Edmodo around books and then everyone who's reading that book joins in the book discussion. Um, mm -hmm. It would be really nice to have it, like to have a suggested push into a book group because you've just all gone through the same book. Right, and what I'm hearing from you, Lisa, and this applies to both of our uh, companies, is that there's this whole new other dimension of letting the users not just be absorbing information, but actually recreating it and teaching and connecting and you know and obviously we become ourselves uh, uh, understanding deepens as we start actually teaching others or committing to others what we've learned so I think that's a really powerful element of it um, so it definitely some thought there for me. One of the things we're trying to do with our little quiet revolution is um, the process of learning um, that we've come up with the notice dream connect do get some kind of an app to where you reflect what I've noticed what I'm dreaming about what I want to connect and then you know as you text it in a few hours later you get texted back 
maybe five other people um, that have been thinking the same things. So mm -hmm. like Steve on your, I mean, to me, that sounds like a grok, what a grok can aggregate for you. And Steve on your site where it says, so what are you going to do about it? Um, you know, maybe we have somehow to aggregate the what are you going to do about it? Um, because not, then it can not only pair people up better, but it can also, you know, like you said, it, um, uh, trail how your quizzes get even more specific to what you just studied. It can also get the topics even more d directed, you know, because mm -hmm. I, you know, we do have people getting together for book reads. Um, but I think technology is allowing us to be even more specific and more we're, I'm going to get together with this group because now we've read five books that are the same as opposed mm -hmm. to, you know, maybe we've just read one book and, you know, it's going to be a nicety kind of a thing because we're talking about a book. Now it's, it's people who, I've read 10 books on this topic and this is the thing that I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. you know? And even yeah. if you haven't yeah, all so read the same book, if you're all reading books on the same topic, yeah. now imagine the conversation you could have. Imagine what you could create out of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then go into more of the, um, the non-linearity of the, I keep, the Instagram, you know, and um, it, it brings up even more topics. I, I can see, you know, Steve, I can see your, your books being part of the, the little webs of the Instagram, you know. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> yeah. Reese's well, Peanut Butter Cup, we're uh, meshing it up, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, I had a question about your relationship with publishers. Sure. So, like, um, I'm assuming that uh, you know that the publishers are okay with this because, in a way, you're you're you know you're helping sell books. But then, on the other side of the coin, like some people who want to close content and make people pay for it. I mean, do you do you ever get that from publishers? Like don't do this or are they encouraging you or do they know what you're up to or yeah well, because we have... I guess my second question is you know where where do you see it going I mean is it is it just going to be business books or do you see it branching out into maybe other books yeah I think those are two different questions I'll start with the publisher one I think the um, we, we have different relationships with different publishers um, the, just so we're clear we're the, we're also charging for access to the content that we're creating on the corporate side. Um, it, depending on who we talk to, you know, the, the reality is when we feature a book on our site, the book sales go up because um, people end up being introduced to the topic for the first time or the book or the author for the first time and then they go out and buy the book or a substantial number of them go out and buy the book and the ones who don't, we're never going to go out and buy it anyways. Uh, so that, that's the first part. So we have, uh, we have good relationships with the publishers uh, and even better relationships with the authors who want to see their ideas spread uh, you know, as far and wide as, as possible. Um, so that's the, that's the first one. The second one is definitely we're looking at growing the types of content we're, we're producing. Uh, you know, we just kind of, it turned into a business by accident. Uh, it happened to be business books that we started with just because of what we were trying to accomplish at first. And then even just talking to companies, we realized that there was this whole slew of um, the content we were creating was really connecting with executives uh, and higher level managers. And there was this whole slew of other people at those companies that that content wouldn't really resonate with unless they were really keen and up and comers and, um, and and that kind of thing. So we were looking at developing other content that would be more personal related, uh, financial planning related, how to have better relationships, how to communicate better, and really all the, I guess we would call the soft skills that um, I didn't learn in school when, and I had a lot of uh, education along the way and really the things that are kind of self-directed learning things but that would be a holistic view of a person which is you don't go to work uh, from nine to five or however long you're going to work for and then go home and forget about it you bring everything to work and you bring everything home these days so how do we create content that is really holistic um, based on just who people are and really we're trying to what we're trying to accomplish with you know what you know, being here tonight and uh, having these conversations is what kind of content do you think we could create? We want to learn that and then 
give that back into the system. So I, I'd love to turn that question back around to you. Um, having taken a look at the site, what content do you think we could create that would be beneficial to you and your students? Well, one place um, we can start. Just, oh, go ahead, Paul. So, is is you know Steven Pinker's book is on your site, so you know there's already some overlap between educational worlds and business worlds, right? So emphasizing that, and maybe even just categorizing here are some education emphasized books somehow. Now we can nominate a few. I saw a lot of books on the site that have been passed around the education world. Yeah, I think there's quite a bit of quite a bit of overlap there and probably more than everybody would realize. And certainly, you know, there's there are things that the uh, the business world could learn from the education world and vice versa. And I think that's that's one of the great things about having these different connections is that, you know, I get to learn exactly where that overlap is and you know how do we push it even further you know what are, what are the things that business uh, businesses should be learning that they have no idea about and what are the things that education should be learning that um, you have no idea about now just because there wasn't that overlap so I, you know and, and by the way there is a suggest a book section of the website I would love to have all your suggestions and um, okay. we, you know we certainly put them in the queue and as more people suggest those books we get them done and maybe so, we can use the Instagram. I don't know if there's a, a way to see what topics are looked at most, you know, when kids are going free form, you know, and, and come up with books that match that. I do have to say the mm -hmm. whole idea of this eclectic knowledge out there, this eclectic um, mindset out there is, is the most powerful thing that's coming to us um, because we do think in categories and in groupings and we're missing so much you know a lot of the books mm -hmm. on his site um, are ones that i've read and have helped us with this quiet revolution i mean so i think this throwing it all into spaces like this are good um, and we, we we've missed a lot because we think we can only oh i'm in education i can only read, read education books or i'm mm -hmm. only studying science so i'm only going to read mm -hmm. science books you know yeah. Look, I, I want to try to organize the last, uh, whatever we have, 20 minutes here, and experiment with our Google Hangout here, and ask both of you if there's a way for you to show us some of the things from your sites. And Steve, maybe I'll start with you. Is there a, I know on Google, on YouTube, there are a couple of uh, tape or videos from your company. Is there one you could play, or so we could get a sense of what they sound like, look like? Sure. Why don't you hold the hold the horn for one minute? Maybe tell a joke okay. or two, and I'll go find one. And oh, I'll be back. don't ask him to do that. Don't ask him to do that. Uh, you know, um, you guys could screen share as well, right? You can yes. And, and walk us through stuff but on your site. That's true, too. Yeah. Let's try the YouTube and see how that works. And then we'll go. One of the summaries I will say is that both of you guys are teachers. You know, we're teachers teaching teachers. And we introduce you as developers. But you're really teachers in, you know, the 21st century. Um, you're just using different kinds of tools to do it. So that's really interesting. So I was wondering if you ever thought of yourself as a teacher. Yeah, absolutely. That's my joke. Uh, that, that's ahead. a good question. Uh, I mean, in a sense, I'm like, I would say I'm a, I see myself as a, as a meta teacher, you know. So there's a, there was a saying, you know, give a man a fish, you know, and then teach him how to fish. But what I'm doing, what I feel like what I'm doing is a level above that is I'm, teaching them how to learn how to fish, right? How to learn how to think. So in a sense, uh, I'm, I'm creating um, scaffolding for everybody to become kind of their own teacher. Um, that, you know, and I've taught a little bit during grad school and other places, and I, it's a really beautiful and challenging experience. So 
Um, and, and to be to be a really good teacher is is something that's really difficult, and it's something that I really admire okay, in people who've been able to really um, create just the right kind of environment and the space for people to really be engaged in learning. Um, yeah, so it's it's definitely a big part of my life. Steve, how are we doing? I found one now. I just got to figure out how to get it in here. So I go to YouTube oh. in here. No, yeah, YouTube up on top. You got it. Okay. Uh, so we have to switch also. There we go. Okay, Everybody so this is a video about a right? book called The Lean Startup, which is a really cool way of uh, taking a look at how do you grow a startup company. And has a lot of principles in it that I think are uh, applicable to anything you're doing for the first time, I mean, whether it's uh, building a business or it's trying a new skill or maybe even creating a new curriculum um, in, in your classrooms. So I don't know. Do you want to just see a clip of this? Play it. We'll, we'll, okay. we'll interrupt if we get bored. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Each and every day, new entrepreneurs around the world are starting their own enterprises, most of whom are armed with an idea for an amazing service or product, so they think, but not armed with the tools they need to build an enduring business. That's where author Eric Ries comes in. He's seen numerous businesses start and fail, most notably his own. However, he has also learned the lessons from these false starts and has gone on to create great success building a multi-million dollar enterprise and coaching others to do the same. What awaits you in the next 12 minutes is literally the keys to a system that, almost without fail, will lead you to a successful business. So if you're willing to put what you think you know aside, you're about to learn the way almost every new business in the world will be run in less than 10 years. What does it mean to run a lean startup? According to Reese, there are five principles that are critical to the success of a startup and what makes a startup a lean one. First is the idea that entrepreneurs are everywhere. They're the person who just lost their job in the recession and have struck out on their own. They're the person who has started and sold his first five businesses and is on to his sixth. There are people we traditionally read about in magazines and books, the self-made success stories. However, entrepreneurs are also found in global corporations working on the next big idea. The second idea is that entrepreneurship is management. The goal of an entrepreneur is to build a sustainable enterprise, and so there needs to be a new and predictable method of doing so, especially in the middle of the digital revolution we find ourselves in. The third idea is that startups exist not to make money or even to serve customers, but to learn how to build a sustainable business. This is the idea that is the most critical to Reese's entire premise, and it's a revolutionary one. Most entrepreneurs start a business with a new idea thinking, most of the time incorrectly, that they have an idea that will be a huge success. Why else start a business and take all that risk? Then they plod along, hustling the hell out of that idea until they either right, Steve, fail or succeed. Can you hear me? Usually in a spectacular <laughs> fashion. Yeah. However, Reese argues, <laughs> if the organization can learn as quickly as possible what the marketplace Good. values are, are we back? They will be able yeah, to let's uh, business and grow it into a sustainable let's, yeah, yeah, turn YouTube off, I think. Validated learning. Fourth is the method I've paused it on my end, uh, so I don't know how to get out okay. of this. Just uh, click the YouTube on the, top of the, to on the top of the panel, each, click YouTube again, and it'll come back. It'll go away. Each of us has to do that. Great. Okay, cool. All right. Thank um, you. I just wanted to, I, Steve, just go through the steps. So I watched the video, and then what's next? And then we can... So you, you watch the video. There's also a PDF you can download if you're if you want to print it out and take it on the road, or you want to read it on your iPad or your whatever tablet you happen to be using. Then the next step is experience, and in that step we uh, challenge you to take what you've learned in that last 15 or 20 minutes, and we ask you a series of questions about how you can apply it to what you're up to. And the idea is to the sooner you can apply it to. Uh, when you've actually learned it, the more effective it's going to be in helping you retain 
the information and obviously actually go out and do something about it because you're most excited about an idea uh, when you first learn it. So we, you take it through the questions and that's the second step. The process, by the way, is called uh, LEMA, L-E-M-A, Learn, Experience, Memorize, and Act. And the third part is if, you, if you've gone through the learn and experience part and you find that it resonates with you and you can find a lot of applications for it, that you want to commit it to memory. So you take the idea code out of the book which is a simply an acronym. And if you want to get really crazy with it, you can use uh, techniques like the memory palace, if you're familiar with that, and really just try to embed it in your mind so that it never goes away. And you can think about it and uh, recall it at a moment's notice. And then the last part is act. And currently on the site, what's there is essentially some principles about how you can get things into action. And there's some research around it. And basically, if you decide what you want to do, uh, exactly when you're going to do it, where you're going to do it, and then if you actually tell somebody else you're going to do it and have them hold you accountable, you're most likely to actually get it done. So the idea is to go through the process, decide that you want to do something to change your, your life or your business or how you're teaching your students, whatever it happens to be, and then go out, decide exactly how you're going to do it, where you're going to do it, and then have somebody hold you accountable to do that. Um, the next iteration of the product, we're going to build in a system so that people can connect with one another like you were talking about earlier, so that you can have people inside the system hold you accountable and essentially create these, these systems of accountability to create action. So while in part it's about learning, uh, we think the, the even bigger part in this is to take action because nothing happens without taking action. So uh, those, are the, those are the steps you go through and of course you can decide how deep you want to get on any particular book that you're you're reading and reviewing, uh, but the the goal is that we want to make it so compelling for you that you will do that for everyone. Great. That was a. Let's do Instagram now. That was a a really nice summary, I think. And I just want to leave yeah. enough time. Is there a way to share your screen, or do you have a YouTube or? Yeah, sure. I'll 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 share it right now. Which is better? Uh -huh. Okay. Thanks, Steve. I really enjoyed that. Sounds really interesting. I really like the incorporate the action piece into it. I think it's really important. Yeah, I'm sorry about my transitions here, guys. I just want to get everything. It's okay. <laughs> uh, so I think I'm sharing my screen. You are. You are. Okay. So everybody's seeing the Instagram homepage. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So this is Instagram. This is you get when you go to the homepage. And so um, I want to learn about a topic. Does anybody want to suggest a topic? I just want to point out on the home page yeah. how I happen to be there. How you happen just, to be there? Just, oh. just oh, saying. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, there's this little, at the bottom, you see this awesome quote it's from crazy. Lisa, which I think uh, we definitely, yeah, we, we have lots more. But My you. kids thought that was very cool, by the way. <laughs> Thanks. And Lisa, you is this the rock in so your book? Let's say I want to learn about whales um, without any okay, further suggestions. So this is when I type in whales. This is what I see, like, boom. The, the kind of graph that you see is basically the conceptual layout of the topic. These are like the important things you need to know about the topic, right? So you see things like uh, uh, blue whales, mammals, humpback whale, and all these different International Whaling Commission, right? So I, I can, so I can start explore. first of all, and on the right you get these kind of key interesting facts about it, uh, and each of them you can kind of click on the more link next to it, and it'll take you to the to the page where the result comes from, so you can explore more. So it's it's an instant way to start, like really reading about this and getting the juice out of this topic. But let, let's say I drill down. So for instance, let's say I see this mammal node. So I click on that in the graph. And what happens is several things happen. First of all, I get the concepts that are surrounding mammal, so I can kind of drill down into that part of the conceptual space and learn more about like what the why is mammal important. And then in the right hand, I see again. I see facts that actually relate mammals and whales, right? So, for instance, uh, this quickly conveys to me for that the mammals, the whales are in fact mammals, um, and I can sort of read more into it. And then also the websites. As I click on each of those concepts, like I click on the blue whale, the everything in these tabs changes. So now this talks about the the uh, key facts talks about blue whales. The websites are now filtered to only talk about the blue whales. Uh, and the videos and so on. So you can really kind of narrow down what exactly you're interested in and research these different subtopics and understand how they're all related. Now the next step from that, and this is where it gets really interesting. 
So if you're logged into Instagram now, I can now start actually adding stuff to the graph. So for instance, I, I saw this, for instance, I, li I, I, I like this factoid, the blue whales are hunted and killed by people for their meat and the oil and so on, right? So I can click on the checkbox next to it and see how it immediately attaches itself to the graph. So now this graph is no longer the generic representation of the whales, but it's my sort of personalized or curated kind of uh, story about what I'm learning. So this is, and, and in the future, this artifact I could share with my peers and my friends and kind of really help people understand about the stuff. In the same way I can clip, I can go to find images and videos that I can also clip to my graph. In a sense, it's similar to Pinterest, which is like all the rage these days and can print stuff. So it's kind of a similar concept. You can now create your own, um, your own different uh, dynamic representation of what you're interested in. And next time you come back to this, if I refresh the page, I will see all these things already. Um, uh, I will see graph in this position, so I can come back to where I left off. Um, the last tab is the quizzes that uh, uh, Lisa mentioned before. Um, so, so this is kind of a way, in a sense, for you to, again, to explore the topic and at the same also to kind of personalize and sort of save what you've been learning about. And then if I go on the, oh, by the way, and so this difficulty control at the top uh, allows me to, if, it, if the stuff that I see is too difficult, I can dial it down, I can click on the, um, I can dial it to the easier level and then start with something simpler. And then as I learn more, I can go back to more advanced concepts and materials. And then on the review tab is, as Lisa mentioned, this is my journal. So as you see, uh, it has all the stuff that I clipped to my graph and kind of the, what, what I visited. So now I can sort of uh, add notes here. I can say, oh, this is a cool image or whatever. And kind of this becomes my evolving kind of portfolio of what I've learned, both for me and for something I can share with my classmates or with my let my teacher see so the teacher can see what I'm learning about and kind of comment and give feedback, um, kind of creating this, this iterative process of learning and exploration. Does that can make sense at a high level? That, can I copy and paste that journal? Yeah, this is just a rich, a yeah, this is just an HTML page. So you can just copy and paste it into your email or, mm -hmm. you know, Google Docs or stuff like that. I mean, eventually this will be integrated right into Google Docs. Um, so mm -hmm. hopefully it will be more, easier to share and more, have more functionality that people do that So when people go there, do they end up with a page? Like, you know, like Facebook, you have your page and... Um... Hmm. So right now, when you go in there, and if you're logged in, right, um, you can, what you see is, so these are the past, the searches that I've done. You can see I've searched in whales, I've searched in gravity, I've searched in fractions. So I can go back to my journal corresponding to each of these topics, right? And I can kind of see what I've worked on before and, and pick it up just where I left off. Um, in the future, our vision is to make it much more social, much more collaborative. So you can, for okay. instance, find people right. that are researching to topics that are similar to you or you know, people that are you know, online various ways and you collaborate with them. So that we have a lot of ideas and it's definitely just the, the beginning of what, what's possible. So, How long yeah. have you been working on this? Uh, for about a year, about a year, maybe a year and three months. And how many um, people are working with you? Um, currently one. <laughs> it's just me wow. right now. Um, it's definitely going to be my labor of love. Um, we have a few people. I have a few people that are kind of helping out with the, the design, the, the design of the logo, but it's mostly me right now. Um, and we're going through, right now I'm going through the, uh, 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 what's, what's called an incubator program called Imagine K-12 in, in the Bay Area that, Basically, they focus on helping educational startup, tech startups kind of get off the ground. So that's kind of what, so right now I'm in the Bay Area doing that. All right, I have a teacher question for you because you've sure. changed the site quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and I like, by the way. But I can't seem to find my class, my students' graphs. Interesting. Are you, not... logged in, are you logged in as a teacher? Are you logged in as you right now? I am logged in as me. Okay. Well, and uh, I'm seeing all kinds of students. Interesting. The, the students that are not in your class? Yeah, these are not my students. Interesting. Well, They're I'd love cute, to take but... <laughs> I'd love to take a look at uh, uh, at it with you maybe offline. 
Okay. Oh, I thought maybe I was supposed to like click something that I didn't know. Yeah. A, re a relate a related question. Um, I'm as a teacher, I'm supposed to be able to see my students' grocks, and it's related to Monica's question too. I think. Can at least the students in my classes see each other's grocks? Not other's yet, journals? but we want to, we we do want to make that happen. That's on our list. Okay. Got see. It. Both of these um, resources I see as great places like Wikipedia, where they are platforms where we start sharing our knowledge. I mean, mm -hmm. imagine a kid who can make a video like Steve's video. I mean, they pretty much know the stuff, you know, and um, you learn more as you, sh as you share it. Um, this, as much did you look at places like Wolfram Alpha before you created this? Are you yeah, I am familiar with Bothell and do really, I think they're one of the really innovative companies that I very much aspire to be. I think the, the key difference between us is, uh, well, there's a, I think the, their stuff is a little more structured. Um, like Instagram just goes out and just pulls information from the web, so there's no, uh, the data is really not a structure. You know, I think they have a lot more specific kind of particular well, types of problems that they're good at. Right, and from a math background, who's someone who's looked at it quite a bit, um, there was a period of time where you would go there and, and there was nothing on what you wanted to find. You know, mm -hmm. um, so again, both of the places, as as we look differently at people, and they're not just teachers and students; they're people who are learning and want to give back what they've learned. I mean, I just see both of these becoming incredible resources. You know, mm -hmm. you could put mm -hmm. in anything. You know. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So your drive comes straight from Google. You haven't uh, did it. Good question. Yeah, yeah. This, I mean, it, it comes from a number of sources, but basically, it's just the yeah, raw content right. from the web. Right. Uh, we particularly, and, and there's this kind of a number of algorithms in place that kind of specifically filter out like all the educational stuff because that's what's in that educational content, right. as opposed to like news and spam and all this other stuff. Um, so. To the, yeah, so, so it's all kind of so, which is great because it really works on a wide range of topics. It's not some sort of a curated subset of things. It's just really you can pretty much search about on anything. To the degree that there are good educational materials about that on the web, you will hopefully find it. Got some ideas, Have you Steve. Un unshared your screen, Kirill. Do I unshare? Or... Yeah, yeah, unshare, so we can see. There you go. Here. There we go. That's great. So we're I love of, it. Thanks. Thanks for that tour. Can I just say that on the question of why use this instead of Google, which you probably get all the time, right? Mm -hmm. And you have answers. I just wanted to give you one of my thoughts. It seemed to me that the kind of intelligence that I look at a Google page and a Google search with, um, my students don't have. And, and this kind of gives them that intelligence in some way. Like, I categorize things when I see things on screen. You know, I, I do all the things that Grok does in some, not all things, but some of them. Kind of, kind of I've learned to do them. But Grok kind of gives you a, a crutch for helping you learning to do that. Is that a fair? Yeah, that's, fair? that's, that's, yeah. that's a, good, a good way to look at it. It kind of helps you conceptually categorize the space and the, and, the, and the information, yeah. I think too, even to me, even better is it helps us zoom out completely and again see what we're looking at as just a piece of this eclectic world that has amazing things to offer. Because every time you, you click one of those nodes and then a whole different, it's just like, it's so alluring, you know, a whole different set comes up. Mm -hmm. And um, and even even you, Paul, I don't think thinks that way when we're on Google. I mean, maybe in some sense, but it's so visual, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. And what we're trying to do is really encourage exploration, it's encourage just like the richness of this process of, like we're not trying to give you, give you to the right answer quickly because there's not one particular right answer. There's just so many things that you could learn about and we're just trying to really help, help make that process really fun and engaging. So Steve, imagine now if you had something like that and you click on one book and then 20 other books come around that book, 
you know, that people, it would be a guide for people to see, oh, if I like this book so much, here's 10 others, you know, or if I like these two books, now there's maybe five others because, you know, we're narrowing down the search. I like it. Yeah, we're definitely working on uh, something like that. Certainly not the, the visualization um, uh, to the to that extent, so we'll just have to steal your technology. <laughs> Sounds good. I, I just want to say to both of you, um, I, I'm not sure you understand, but as an educator, I so appreciate you reaching out to educators and saying, how can we improve this for you? Mm -hmm. um, that's amazing to me. It's something that I've absolutely loved about Instagram from the very beginning is that every time I had a conversation with you, something changed every time. And it just, um, that's, you know, as educators, we're, we're so used to people telling us how we should be doing things. It's nice that people are actually willing to listen. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. And I, and I, in turn, really appreciate your willingness to work with us and help us. And um, I think you guys have so much amazing sort of knowledge and understanding of how how students learn that is just just impossible to to mimic unless you've actually been there. And so that's why it's so valuable for us um, to to work together. Well, I appreciate it. And um... Steve, one of the thoughts that I had, and then Chris, I'll let you in. <laughs> Sorry, is that you? You've kind of developed a genre here of how to talk about books, how to share books. Um, and I, I love, Monica, your visionary sense that this is like Wikipedia, but it's not yet, right? <laughs> like, we can't, we can't put up videos about books yet. So I just wanted to kind of say I love seeing the genre developing, and I'm wondering when we can put stuff beside it. Sure. I, th I think that, you know, there's some interesting uh, conversations around what content can be created with, uh, with, with books because of, you know, the obligations to publishers and things like that. But it's certainly something that we're, we're exploring and we want to continue to, you know, both with uh, the education field and the corporate field understand how can we create something that not only has our content in it, but how can you also fill it with your own content so that it becomes a learning platform that, um, is really a, a co-creation between what we're doing and what you're doing and really just create that kind of flow and conversation around how can we all do this better for each other. So I don't have a great answer for how we're going to do it yet, but it's certainly the, you know, I'd love to talk further with you guys about how you think it Good could be done. Good questions, yeah. yeah. Chris? <laughs> yeah, um, I was just thinking that um, two of the big challenges for me in my classroom is like student research uh, you know, and, and reading. And so what I see is um, Steve's um, application is that it's another way for students to access books in a way that um, sometimes books are really uh, uh, daunting to students. And so it's almost like you have a, a book brag kind of thing and students get um, interested in that content and they want to read, but sometimes picking up the book and starting from page one is, is hard for kids to do. So that speaks to a real important need that I have as a teacher. And then I just finished a research unit. So um, the whole thing with the, the Instagram, and what I like is that it's, it's not linear, that the students that I teach, when they do research, they tend to put one thing right after another, and then they'll get something and they think, well, where does where can I put that in in the line of thinking? But what I like about the dynamic thinking of Instagram is that, um, you know, I see that it moves, and I think my students have a tough time rethinking connections. Mm -hmm. So just, uh, can you, um, I'm trying to understand the essence of what you're saying, though. So. Is that a good thing that it's sort of nonlinear? Do you see it as a valuable thing? It's a good thing because it switches there. That one view you showed is linear when it goes and it looks like it's, you know, an HTML page. Mm -hmm. But then the, I don't know if it's flash based or what it is. Um, you know, that's not. And I think 
the graph, that helps yeah. them see the difference between the two. So right. I meant that is a good thing. Right. That's a really, uh, really interesting point that you bring out. I really like that. Yeah. yeah. And in a sense, I mean, I think both Steve and I, uh, uh, that's not the parallel between what we're doing, is we're both building something that takes the old linear text heavy view of something and making it much more kind of engaging and not just textual and in a sense nonlinear because we are I mean, it's really we're creating this very new medium media that sort of uh, that hopefully will disrupt this kind of you know several hundred year old uh, textual kind of <laughs> book book format. I also what I like about the concept map and how that works is that for my students and they are young um, when they do a search they put in a word and if nothing comes back they're done they have nowhere to go at that point because they don't know enough about a topic to know what else to search for and that's when they usually come to me and say uh, I can't find anything but when I send them on Instagram all I tell them is click on any one of those wheels and you'll get more information. And so it, it helps them find the connecting topics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So listen, guys, um, about five times in the last five minutes, I felt like you, you had a great concluding comment. <laughs> so we need to just kind of stop. <laughs> um, uh, and thank you so much and say this will be an ongoing conversation. I hope we can call you up again as we mess around Absolutely. with this. Instagram is really kind of obvious to me how um, I can jump in as a teacher. But Steve, could you say how we could um, jump in to read it for me as teachers? Sure. I don't know. I don't, I guess I don't know the exact answer to that. And that's where we're trying to really explore okay. here. And what I would like to say about it is, you know, we'd love to have as many, as many teachers in there taking a look at how we could best utilize the service for teachers, for students. And um, if you know anybody that would like, uh, like to get in there and have a free account for them and their students, um, send them to me. <laughs> so, uh, just so have them send, we, send me an email at Steve at reading for me. Overnight, you're going to have your okay. 403. <laughs> well, I already sent so you, an, you email. an email. I told you that earlier. How to do it. Okay, good. Gotcha. Thanks. And likewise, I, I'm always uh, open to feedback and uh, always willing to connect with educators and just anybody else who kind of likes learning and uh, so because it, we are designing something that's new and unique and has a lot of variables in it. So I'm always excited to connect with other people. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, guys. Let me, um, yeah, thank you. Um, I want to mention Dave Cormier and Jeff Lebo because they set up this community um, at edtechtalk.com and um, worldbridges.net. And we'll see you next Wednesday. Thank you, everybody. Thanks very much, Paula. Thanks, everybody. It was great talking with you today. Good night. Thanks, Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.